Greetings, Madeline, all the way from Queensland, Australia. This evening, you're talking with Peter Walkton from Walkton Entertainment. How are you this evening? I'm very well, thank you, Peter, and um, thank you for having me. Oh, it's an honour. It's a great honour to, to meet you and to talk with you this evening. Uh, I really adored this film, just to be really upfront with you. And one thing that I really took away from this film, as the credits are rolling up my screen, I sort of <laughs> wondered, as a director, have you ever experienced a Christmas personally that's very similar to a savage Christmas? Have you had some embarrassing Christmases or some very awkward Christmases? Like, I have to ask straight away to break the ice. Oh. Of course you do. Look, uh, yes, there's there's always been elements to Christmases that have been a little awry and um, particularly some of the bigger family Christmases I had, you know, maybe even 10 years ago or so when a lot of us were closer, it was just so much screaming over each other and I, I started to realise that's our culture of conversation is just screaming over and not <laughs> listening to each other and it, it just sounded like a big pack of galahs just squawk, squawking. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I started to go, oh, wow, we really don't quite sit down and actually have really check in with each other and connect. It's just this chaotic crossfire. But, um, no, I've had many a weird time at Christmas, anytime really, but, um, particularly Christmas. And I think most people have in some way, shape or form. 100%. I 100% agree with you there as well. I don't care if my family's listening. I agree with you. And I was going to ask too, is that where the inspiration for this film came from your own personal experiences or even better where did this inspiration for this film where did it come from do tell great question um no it well it wasn't really laid on with the christmas um christmas wasn't a factor earlier on it was it, it was once upon a time a play and we were developing it as a play um my co-writer dan mulverhill and and it went through many incarnations as, as it tends to do and then it went on the back burner and then resurrected as a screenplay and it was always about the family and a lot of characters survived throughout mm. these many years but it was always meant to be this um really domestically charged piece that a bit of an, a homage to august Osage county or long day's journey into night and just goes mm. all the way through and and kind of doesn't kind of jump time or anything so we have really tried to retain a lot of that theatricality mm. but then of course we we got a bit of a run-in with um you know, uh, a bit of support from Screen Queensland, Screen Oz and, and did a writer's room, got Max, yeah. our co-writer, on in the last couple of years. And then it's kind of lent itself, obviously, to the queer experience as well and his transitional journey. But also we thought, wow, what a time. Christmas is the time that everyone's expectations are just so far up mm -hmm. and it makes sense to kind of throw that whole situation into to the dynamic that is Christmas time. So that was kind of, it was a later layer, but it was yep. a very important one, I think, as well. Beautiful. And out of curiosity, like this has been a big journey for you. I'm aware of it. But, you know, for those listening or reading right now, they probably haven't heard, how long did it take to make this film? And even better, where was it filmed for those that may not be aware of it as well? Yeah, sure. Well, as I say, that the the writing of it took its time, and mm -hmm. as I say, it wasn't like full time writing. It was kind of like most indie filmmakers. You kind of you have a few things on the stove, hoping one of them kicks off. And yeah. so, as I say, this was probably two thousand and fifteen. It's Genesis. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, 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 yes. And then it's funny because I think a lot of filmmakers will understand. You know, you kind of can't keep hitting your head against the wall. You've just got to let whatever project take shape and sometimes mm. just let it go for a second. So we started to get some real momentum in the last couple of years, and as I say, started to get support from production partners and and the screening bodies and government bodies. Yeah. And um, that's when we started to get that traction and crack it crack it open. And again, so scary as a writer to have have it set in a certain way. Yeah. Um, for many years and then it completely overhauled and so much surgery to happen but you know what mm. nothing's lost that's meant to be there and I think um, Dan and I learned the hard way that that's that's definitely the case and Max was so incredible to to offer up uh, his contributions and it just made it what it was but yeah. I would say what was great was we always had like um, private investment just just waiting in the wings and we just mm. really needed to build it and hope that they would come in that kind of very biblical Jesus fashion. Yeah. Um, you needed a miracle. Yeah, I know. It's a little bit of a Christmas alignment there. but um, And then so things started to move probably about middle of last year, which would have been 2020, where are we, 2022. And, and then we started to get the run into the end of last year. So we all had about two weeks of pre-production. This is in Brisbane. We set it in Brizzy. Um, two, 
two weeks of pre-production just before I won Christmases, yep. uh, which was so interesting. So we all went off cast and crew to have Christmas and then reconvened straight away in the new wow. year and just um, did a quick little in and out three week shoot. But we found this incredible location out in um, Sanford, Mount Sampson area mm -hmm. uh, on this estate and um so lucky to get that actually because I mean not only was it a bit of a task you know shooting in the middle of summer in yep. Queensland as you can yes. appreciate um it was also like oh everyone's on holiday everyone's booking out the big McMansions and the big spacious things to have their vacations mm -hmm. so um it, it was very lucky to stumble upon the the location that we did it um, is a very nice location even the house and everything you can't deny while watching this film it's a gorgeous spot and you mentioned briefly about you know, the heat was a bit of a challenge, you know, out of curiosity while making the film, what was, because I love a good story, what was your biggest challenge, uh, frustration or something that may have a hiccup that occurred on set? Was there any sort of major challenges or was it a smooth sail from start to finish? Well, I like to throw many a Tanty. I'm such a diva. So <laughs> I was my own biggest challenge. No, <laughs> I wasn't. But I was having, I mean, for me personally, and what I was caretaking, of course, it was it was such a fine line because I had been on the journey so long and was silently kind of more co-producing. I knew that if we went over time, it was going to cost a lot of money that we never mm -hmm. had. And so I think for me, it, the biggest thing was time. I knew we, we had such a tight shoot and so much to cover in a sense because it was such a an ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. And although we had one predominant location, having so many kind of characters all together so often was was probably the biggest challenge, I would say. Yep. And knowing how to temper that and knowing when to hold and fold certain coverage aspects or um, also how to honour and tie up certain storylines for each character so that they all got to be seen and heard to a point and there was still that promise of them changing or growing or moving through into the next phase. But uh, time for me, and I was having nightmares every night just going, you know, just those kind of fever yep. dreams like of running out of time. Mm. So I'd say it was that. And I think a lot of um, first time, second time, indie you know, filmmakers can understand that you just don't normally have the resources and, and time that you need, but you do yeah. it. You just truck through. Absolutely. I agree with you there as well. And, you know, based on the results of this film, it doesn't look like you were sweating behind the scenes or freaking out or having nightmares or having any sort of fear or anything. It it has come out beautifully, like Christmas Day should be, fingers crossed. And the film <laughs> does include a lot of themes. I mean, quite a few different themes. You know, I took away forgiveness, you know, acceptance being another one. Um, out of curiosity, you know, I mean, it might seem a bit obvious, but I wanted to hear your take on it. Why did you add some of these themes into a Christmas comedy film? Yeah, that's a that's great. I, I think, you know, a, a bit of a manifesto Dan and I had cultivated over the years in terms of, like, as I say, the genesis of this piece to begin with, and then, and then obviously having Max's input and his own experience and what he's kind of come up against. You know, we all use humour to kind of deal with some of the darker sides of our family and our existence, mm -hmm. and and we've always wanted to use comedy as a vehicle to hit home stronger social messages. So mm -hmm. it was a no-brainer that we always had those key themes to honour and make sure that they were coming through. And as much as comedy is its own thing, without that kind of light and shade, um, we just don't really feel like there's enough depth or something to kind of um, take away from. So it was really important that we made sure it was having that emotional impact as well. And I just can't help but feel like, you know, you get the audience in. I mean, there's there's that ice-breaking moment when they, they go, oh, I can laugh. I've got permission to laugh, even if it's awkward yeah. or cringe or whatever it is. And you you relax into it and then all of a sudden there's a few few um punches in the guts along the way. Yeah. I kind which... of took it like a bit of a roller coaster. I sort of found myself getting... <laughs> cringeworthy shocked you know in my cinema chair and then at times I was like oh I didn't expect to feel that that's really lovely and so it was a really good combination um, of emotions and comedy and you've really nailed that as well and let, let's talk about the cast and I'm going to be a little bit selfish because uh Darren I got to talk about Darren briefly um Dazza. you know Dazza I was I nearly said Dazza and I didn't want to be disrespectful but that's from um, Queensland we can do this <laughs> totally I love it I've I've had Darren on VHS tapes from Full Frontal growing up, massive influence oh. in my random comedy. Um, but also you've got Rachel Griffiths in this film as well. Um, you know, what was it like and, and how did you go about getting these these, you know, big actors in these films? In this film. Yeah, it was it was so wonderful. I mean, Rach and I had had we have have, we do have, what am I saying? We do have a lovely working relationship. And it was it, it started with Ride Like a Girl when I was a director attachment. Mm. And that was about five months um attached 
to her hip basically um and so we really got to know each other and realized that we had similar sensibilities in what kind of I guess jazzed us and and you know from then on it was always a matter of Mads whenever you get your film up or whatever you do I will always try and support you in any way and mm-hmm. it just so happened like yeah it was so great yeah. and it is wonderful and and it was a bit of a full circle moment for me having her on set and being able to direct her and and um, have that support there. And it was a matter of, you know, just her schedule too. Like, hey, Rach, yeah. you got a couple of days, let's fly you up. And it was wonderful that it worked out. And as for Darren, I've known of Darren's work through even my sister Harry's, you know, connection to her projects and Patty Bramall's mm-hmm. projects. And um, no activity for me was always a bit of a clincher. I was just like, this guy is unreal. And also he's got such a strong theatrical background. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I, 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 apart from them being amazing clowns and particularly Darren, um, I really wanted to try and get my established actors, the ones that did have a little bit more of that theatrical background and, mm-hmm. and that understanding of staying in that space of discovering and that joy that I kind of think everyone needed to have to a point, even if it was quite dramatic and hardcore at times, mm-hmm. there was always still that little bit of clown coming through. Um right. But yeah, Darren, Darren's, you know, comedy is serious business and that's that's how mm-hmm. he took it. Like he was so passionate about what he was doing and he'd always come through with offers and, you know, he, he took it really seriously mm-hmm. and I really loved seeing him at work and seeing him do that. And further to that, mm-hmm. he's so, like, generous with spirit. Actually, all of our actors were, but, like, he's an acting teacher as well and so he was helping, you know, Max and and Thea, my two trans actors, they mm. had never been on a proper set before, done a feature film before in that way. Um, yep. And so he was able to kind of, you know, have a little chat on the sides, you know, and just just be there and offer that support and hold space. So good. It's it's Unreal. lovely hearing that that's the sort of guy that he is. And I'm not surprised because, you know, yes. you get that on screen, but it's, it's lovely to hear a confirmation about how genuine both of those actors are. And, you know, let's talk about the remainder of the cast. They are all awesome. Yep. There's no denying it. I could be here all night talking about the talent <laughs> of all these casts and characters. And there's a wide variety of characters here. There's so many different, you know, unique features and, and things going on in all of their lives. And I was sort of curious, during production, were these actors and characters, were they allowed to ad lib a little bit and get a little carried away? Or were they on a tight schedule, stick to the script, no funny business? No, were they allowed no. to be loose on set and take it take it for the reins? They were loose as. Loose <laughs> as gooses. No, well, I, I mean, there was geese, actually. Um, no, there was no way that I could. Um, I mean, it was always for me, like, let's get it real, not right. And, uh, you know, I really trust my actors and I wanted them to feel so safe to explore and to to speak up and say, this is bumping me, this isn't feeling right. Obviously, it's a lot more daunting when you've got eight people in a table scene going, hey, this isn't right and then that's not right. And then in a way, sometimes one thing will um, unstitch and unravel another part. So it's a domino effect. So if there is a major kind of plot bump or, or character kind of bump for us, it would sometimes impact the way the the rest of the scene would play out. So we needed every actor on deck ready to just go for it. And, and, but again, staying in that moment and staying free to impro a bit and paraphrase it's, it brings a certain magic. Mm. Um, And I was really encouraging of that. And they all naturally kind of do that anyway as actors. Um, So it was great because they just had that organic nature to them. So mm-hmm. you're right. We we definitely paraphrased and um, poor old continuity, um, Millie. She was like, "Oh, okay, all right, yep, we'll stick with that. We'll do that." I said, "Look, hey, hey, it'll all come out in the wash. We'll figure it out. Yeah, Fix it in post." No. Yeah, again, yeah. you wouldn't have known that that's the case, but it's again <laughs> great to hear these things behind the scenes. And let's talk a little bit about you because since I've seen the film, I'm kind of curious as to what you're going to do next. Are you sort of keen to stick with? comedy and dramas or are you looking maybe at doing some horror or do you want to tackle a rom-com what kind of things are you keen to dabble in next look I I mean it's for me I love using comedy in different ways and exploring different kinds of tones and shades of comedy I think that's that's one thing that um, I have a kind of natural you know inclination and I'm partial to a certain style sometimes but I'm currently working actually on an ABC show um, a BBC co-pro actually in Canberra here um, called Austin and it's um, it's got the amazing Michael Theo from Love on the Spectrum in it, a great yeah. neuro- neurodiverse actor and then um, two UK actors, Ben Miller, Sally Phillips. And so it's it's actually warm core, as they say, or it's quite a wholesome comedy 
it's not as rankin out there as what I'm kind of used to. And it's really nice to kind of settle into that and feel that out and explore that. And there's like a, a childlike naivety to it that I really kind of like tapping into as well. But look, for me, it's always going to be about comedy um, and, and strengthening, I guess, that my craft around that. And as I say, just kind of picking projects that resonate and have a little bit more of a social poignancy to them, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very good. So basically you've got lots of things, you know, coming your way and, and currently in progress, which is really wonderful. See, that was actually my next question as to what you're stirring up next. Because again, I'm, I'm eager to hear your career and support you further. And, you know, as we come to a bit of a summary and a bit of a close, the film is going to be available in Australia from November 16th. That's three days time. Uh, yeah. The film was released at BIF 2023, which I was very honored to be a part of. And your first session sold out. So it sounds like to me that, um, you know, people need to grab their tickets today. They need to pick out their Christmas shirt. I'm wearing a oh, look shirt. at you go. Love uh, it. Love it. So they need to grab their shirt, popcorn. They need to get to the movies and see this film. But out of curiosity, as we wrap it up, if I gave you 30 seconds, 45 seconds, give or take, what do you want to tell the people of Australia as to why should they go to the cinema and go check out A Savage Christmas? Your words. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, we've got some absolute corker films that we revisit every Christmas. I know that a lot of them are family friendly and this is family friendly to a point, but it's probably more for the adults. And I wanted to make something a little bit different, a little bit bad Santa-esque, a little bit darker. So we've got the drunky fighty Christmas, but obviously it's underpinned with some beautiful kind of themes as we've talked about. So um, you won't be left wanting. You'll get everything you want, the comedy, the the, the tears, hopefully, if, you, if you're inclined that way, you'll get it all it'll be a massive roller coaster like you said and I think you'll be surprised with with what you see and 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 how far the characters come and and I guess your perspective as well um from start to finish and look at the end of the day you're going to resonate with someone in the family and go oh my god this is so like mine holy moly I don't feel so alone or you will leave going thank goodness we are not like them I can breathe a sigh of relief and just be so happy to just kick back this Christmas you win either way um but I think it's a lovely reminder just to remember that we all have subjective memories in our families we all have to kind of find that compassionate meeting point um and that's going to happen year in year out no matter what you do well said. You re you said that like you had it planned. You had no clue I was going to ask you that, but you <laughs> yeah. delivered. Well I'm done. channeling. I'm channeling. I'm yeah. channeling something. <laughs> like this film, I'm impressed. Your work's amazing. Um, I do Thank sincerely you so wish much. you all the very best. I do think the people of Australia are really in for a treat, and it's really getting um, some great screenings across Australia. Dandy Cinemas, Cineplex, a few to name. So please check out some session times, and this is an Australian film that is worth supporting and checking out. Uh, Madeline, it's been an honour to meet you. I want to support all your work in the near future. Thank Congratulations. You, this is a gem.